and welcome back to my channel. My name is Helen Roberts. For those of you who don't know me, I am currently an actress on a Welsh soap opera. I work as a journalist, but also I share a lot online about my endometriosis journey and all things to do with like endo, women's health, periods. Happy Monday, guys. I thought we could have like a little sit down and chat sort of vibes going on for this vlog and this is going to be all about my endo journey. When I was 14 I was the last one to come on my period and I spent like six months of my life literally with any tingle that I had I was there. I was like oh my gosh mom should I be wearing a pad now and she'd be like well are you bleeding and I'd be like well no and then she'd be like well no you don't need to wear a pad then. As soon as I came on my period, my life completely changed. I changed as an individual, I changed as a person because I thought that having my period was going to make me a woman and I was going to be like thriving off life and I'd be like smashing everything but I was totally wrong and I experienced like the most horrendous painful periods I lost so much blood and I was just massively struggling but I didn't understand because like none of my friends were going through the same thing like nobody had complained about like heavy painful periods no one would miss school because they were on their period no one was going sick in the toilets because of their period but all of those things were happening to me so I really struggled at that point in my life to the point where I went to the doctor and I went to speak to him and he told me that I was small because I was petite, I was losing a lot of blood and my body just couldn't cope with the amount of blood that I was losing because I was so small. He also said that period pains are normal and I should just put up with it and stop being a drama queen. And I know that a lot of people who have gone through endometriosis have had the same sort of comments which baffles my brain. I'm like, how dare you comment on the sort of pain that somebody else is going through? Like, that's not okay. So then I was put on the pill literally from the age of 14 and the pill did change a lot for me. It gave me my life back and it allowed me to do things and I was just more productive on my period. I was losing less blood. I was also aware of when my period would be arriving because I had the, like the same day break and so because of that I could like prepare and mentally prepare more than anything. But the pill definitely helped but it just masked a lot of my symptoms and even though like I wasn't in so much pain anymore I was still in pain and it still wasn't normal and I did struggle. So for the next couple of years of my life, I was very much like still getting pains, still getting bloatedness, still painful poos, and I was still struggling. So I kept on going back and forth to the doctor. They kept telling me, telling me that there's nothing wrong with me. They sent me for ultrasound scans. Ultrasounds were fine. Side note, if they're sending you for ultrasounds and they come back normal, it doesn't mean that you don't have endo. And I think... By the end, I was just fed up. I was fed up of speaking to the doctors about this freaking thing that was happening to me and I was fed up of nobody listening to me and I just had enough. So I kind of like shoved it to the back of my mind. I just grinned and bared it because that's what I was told to do. And I think when medical professionals tell you you're being dramatic or you're being a drama queen, you do start to believe them and you're like, maybe I am maybe I am just making this up maybe I'm not, I'm actually not in pain but that's not true so I went to university lived my best best life um loved alcohol loved processed food loved going out all the time loved having a good time but I was definitely not okay when I was on my period and I struggled massively but I was still on my pill at this point so I had an appointment with a gynecology, with a gynecologist and I went to see him and he didn't even feel my stomach at that point. He just told me like, you're making this all up. I've got nothing to do with you here. This is nothing to do with me. You need to go and see gastro if you're struggling. 
with bowel problems and that's what he said and that was really hard that was really tough to understand and I just remember at that point in my life I was just like crying out like absolutely floored by his comments and I made a complaint about him because I was just like oh my gosh if he says this to like other people as well like that's not okay it's not fair so fast forward to summer of 2022 that's when my life came to a halt basically I was really unwell as an actress who's been in the same job for six years like I work on a contract basis of like 27 weeks and that does mean that I have to find other jobs in between because 27 weeks throughout the year like it's not actually that much work so every summer I would get a job and summer of 2022 I had a job with a television production company based in Wales they're a very well known well established company and number one I was so grateful to be in that job anyway like I was chuffed and number two I just didn't I feel as if I let myself down at that point in my life and looking back it was tough and it was difficult and it was awful and soul destroying and it was a really difficult time because I'd come off the pill and I hadn't have settled properly either and I was driving left right and center and I just massively struggled with the job because of the pain that I was in and there was one day where I came home from work early and I literally just was on the floor crying in absolute agony and my mom came back and she was just like Halep you've got to do something about this like this is not okay anymore and that was the moment of like realization being like this is not normal this is not okay I shouldn't be feeling this way so after that moment I then went and I phoned my GP the waiting list was six weeks and I just couldn't wait six weeks to see someone I could not so then um I went online I googled private GPs and I had an appointment with Nuffield Health paid like 70 pounds for this call and I thank this woman so much like she was the kindest she was compassionate she had empathy and she just made me feel validated and at this point I couldn't run anymore I was not sleeping with my partner because it was so painful I was missing a lot of my work because of the pain that I was in I spent so much time being bloated and uncomfortable so just having this woman listen to me and actually make me feel as if I'm a human being like I thank her like she was insane so then she told me everything that I needed to do she told me that I needed to get an appointment with my GP that it was urgent that this is classed as urgent and she told me everything she was like when you go to the GP tell them everything and they will do an STI test they will also do a pregnancy test they will then have to send you for an ultrasound and you will see a gynae but you need to push for a laparoscopy so I called back my GP, went to see, oh my god I think there was a fly, went to see my GP and she, oh, I live in the Arctic when I'm at home guys and there's blinking flies everywhere. So I went to my GP, had to do everything that she told me that I would be doing and she then referred me for an ultrasound. She did note, my GP noted that I'm, um, she was going to put everything down as urgent and I needed to have an ultrasound urgently. So she told me, oh, ring on Monday now to see where you are on the waiting list. So I did. I called them. And the way I was greeted on the phone is not okay. I asked them where I was in the waiting list and had they have received my um, referral. And they said yes. And we have pushed you to the back because we've decided you're not urgent. I was like, okay, but why? And then the receptionist she was like well you want to know if you've got endometriosis and an ultrasound is not going to sort that for you so you're not urgent and then it was kind of like a frustrating point for me to be at again in my life because I was just like 
but until I get this ultrasound, I'm not going to be referred to see a gynecologist and I'm not going to be able to move on with my endometriosis diagnosis. diagnosis. And she was like, well, the best thing for you to do is come and wait in A&E, pretend you're in a lot of pain and um, hopefully get seen by us and have an ultrasound on the same day. <laughs> Sorry, what? I was just like, surely you can't be like, no, surely that's not a thing. But that was it. Like... Um, I wasn't gonna be seen and that was something that again was a struggle again so after that I just decided that enough is enough I googled endometriosis specialist near me and I found one in Cardiff and Cardiff from here is about an hour 20 each way and I booked an appointment I literally saw him within a week and he told me there and then he was like I have no doubt that you have endometriosis like you 100% have endo so he sent me the same day for a transvaginal scan and where I went was in Spire in Cardiff with Mr Griffiths and he was insane like he he was amazing he was lush and on that same day they were doing walk-ins for the transvaginal scan so I had the scan the same day and oh my gosh when I say I was in pain I was in agony during this scan so we found that my cervix was tilting backwards and that is actually a common sign of endometriosis and also he could see that my ovary wasn't in the correct place like my ovary was stuck behind my womb so I knew there and then like it was confirmed that I had endo and that day was tough so I've just seen a private endo specialist and he was like this is severe endometriosis like you should have been seen a long time ago got it he said that i've got severe endometriosis don't get fobbed off for um your pain and the fact that you know your body i mean like the consultant i saw today oh she was so nice <laughs> i think it's nice to finally be like be listened to and for somebody to actually listen just make me feel like you're doing the right thing and we can get you sorted i don't know how i feel either like i feel really emotional like i'm like gutted but relieved but um annoyed maybe no i'm not even annoyed i'm just i don't know what I think finding out that you have something that you've thought you've had for a long time like it's a difficult thing so he referred me back to the NHS then for a uh, surgery so I called them up to check what the waiting times was for laparoscopy excision and it was six and a half years if I waited six and a half years with an ovary stuck behind my womb, my bowel was in the wrong place, like, sorry, what? I could not wait six and a half years. Like, I was in so much pain, like, on a daily basis by now. I was not living my best life. I was just crying all the time. I had mental health, like, issues. And I was just like, I don't know where I'm going to be in six and a half years. So... I went to have a, another appointment with Mr. Griffiths and booked me in for a laparoscopy excision and it all happened within six weeks. So like from my first consultation with him to my operation date was six weeks. And I am so grateful that I was able to spend that money on my operation. So it was about six and a half grand. And I honestly like I'm grateful that I could spend that money and actually get some sort of life back but I know like loads of people can't do that but I feel as if I'm paying the price now because I'm like I want to buy a house with my partner but I haven't got that deposit money anymore because I spent my house deposit on an operation that probably saved my ovary and I think it's been a difficult journey and it's been really painful at times but the operation itself I feel as if like people expect that you're going to be like cured and you're going to be fine and you're going to be perfect straight away but I was actually on my period when I had my operation done but periods after that were like I definitely feel much better now but this is like a year and like two months later so like I feel as if it's just gone like this 
and just gone down sort of thing and I 100% feel so much better for it now but also like I've had to do loads of lifestyle changes like I'm really cautious with making sure that I get my um, nutrition in my gut health is so important to me I don't drink alcohol anymore uh, sleep is really important to me I sleep literally if I don't get eight hours sleep like I'm like no this is not happening I am getting eight hours sleep and routine is really important for my endo so I've had to change a lot of things about my life but if it makes me feel better like surely like I will do it and I feel as if endo is sort of something that we're speaking about in the endo community we speak a lot about endo obviously because that's our thing but it's about time that women's health get taken seriously and it's about time that there is actually something happening because I feel as if like we're constantly pushed to one side we're constantly misdiagnosed we're constantly like told like we're making things up we're a drama queen and I just want to say that if you've been through an awful journey with your endo like I'm really sorry and I hope that the future brings you the kindness and compassion that you deserve on your journey and if there's anything I can ever do please let me know my TikTok is at just another girl with endo I'm on Instagram at at hellof underscore underscore and or just comment on the, this video you're never alone so please there's a fly on my camera but you're never alone and please don't think that you're ever alone so many people want to hear about your journey and so many people have been through similar journeys and it's not okay so i've just noticed that i've been talking and like i haven't had a sip of my tea but anyway so that's a little bit to do with my endo journey and hope you enjoyed this video i am probably gonna be doing a lot more videos about endo and i want to raise as much awareness as possible <laughs> but anyway thanks for watching